The United Colonies are not who you think they are. A galactic superpower? Yes. The forerunner for the future of humanity? Yeah. A symbol of unity in thought, ideology, and culture? Kind of. But deep beneath the accolades and successes the United Colonies have brought to humanity's future lies a subtle but ever so powerful tenet that could prove to be humanity's next downfall. Join me as we explore the question, what happens when security becomes tyranny? Welcome to Starfield Signal, your place for everything Starfield. I'm your host, Luke, and this is our first lore spec video, a series where we explore the known lore of Starfield, seasoned with a little bit of speculation for fun. For this first entry, our sights are aimed at the United Colonies, the faction with the largest known military force in the galaxy. Looking at the surface, the UC seems vanilla, like it's the safe bet, like it has everyone's best interest in mind. However, I want to propose that there could be a lot more going on beneath the shiny surface of the UC. Timestamps and chapters are available for this video. I'd also love for you to click or tap that like button. That helps out a ton for others to find this video and join us on the journey. And to that point, if you're watching but aren't subscribed, we invite you to do so. We're a group of positive and excited fans and we're just having a lot of fun, so thanks so much. Let's get into the United Colonies. A brief rundown of what we actually know. As a reminder, we've been told our Starfield story starts in the year 2330, a little over 200 years into humanity's future. We've seen from gameplay footage that the United Colonies were established in 2161 with the settlement of New Atlantis on the planet Jemison, found in the Alpha Centauri star system. A couple of notes here. The Alpha Centauri star system is the closest in-game system to Sol. This is true in our actual galaxy as well. Although AC is technically a triple star system, but it looks like the game will only account for one of those stars. Also, Jemison is the most habitable planet within the Alpha Centauri system. With a temperate climate, oxygen in its atmosphere, and abundant levels of flora and fauna, Jemison would give the first galactic settlers the best chance of successfully establishing the first sustainable colony outside of our own star system. As a bonus, the planet Gagarin also seems to host a habitable environment within the AC star system. With this in mind, we can safely assume that sometime between 2030 and 2161, humanity not only reached out to the stars to find a new home, but mysteriously were forced to leave their old one. Now, this is only a span of about 130 years, which honestly doesn't seem like a lot to transition a whole species to a new galaxy, but for context, 130 years is about the same amount of time from now back to when powered flight and the technology for radios, television, and radar were invented. We've come a long way since then, and given technology's nature to grow and develop at an exponential rate, this distant future becomes a little easier to imagine. Now, back to the United Colonies. Let's speculate for just a moment. If you are the leaders of a massive exodus from one solar system to another, what would be one of the guiding principles? Probably something to the effect of survivability of the species at all cost. Now, anytime you tag at all cost onto a phrase, it always sounds overdramatic and maybe a bit too sensational. However, whenever you're up against extinction, I'll give them a pass. And while I wouldn't fault these leaders for such an extreme tenet amidst the massive task of finding and settling a new home, it's the adoption of this kind of thinking and philosophy by future generations that can prove to be overbearing and unhealthy when rebuilding communities and cultures. And this is the speculation that really leads into the heart of this video. Did humanity mistake the kind of leadership it took to find a new home for the kind of leadership it needs to build a new home? In addition to the assumptions we can make about the settlement of New Atlantis, I want to explore two other pieces of evidence that I believe contribute to this speculation. One, Aquila City and the Colony Wars, and two, the allusions to the imperialist tendencies of the United Colonies. Let's address Aquila City first. I'll actually be making another lore spec video focused on the Freestar Collective, so I don't want to dive in too deep, but the main thing I want to draw attention to here is Aquila City was established in 2167, just six years after New Atlantis was established. Will Shem, the lead quest designer of Starfield, said the Freestar Collective represents the space western fantasy. With this, we could presume that this loose confederation of three distinct star systems 
are some of the farthest settled systems from our origin of Seoul. Even if this isn't true, and the Freestar Collective is in closer proximity to New Atlantis, describing their system as a space western fantasy alludes to different values, different cultures, and ultimately different guiding principles on colonization. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that these systems were established with this specific intent. After all, whatever differences there are between the colonies of the Freestar Collective and the United Colonies, this tension didn't boil over into an all-out war until around 2310 when we're told these colony wars began. But what we can be sure of is that whatever differences there were, the United Colonies with all of their might and conviction had made the choice to assert their dominance over the Freestar Collective colonies in an attempt to bring them back in line with the UC's principles, values, and laws to the point of bloodshed, or you might say, at all costs. Although we're still just speculating here, this doesn't instill confidence in the United Colonies' leadership and their ability to nurture and foster so many colonies across the whole galaxy. This makes me think that whoever is in charge does not like letting go of power. Oh, and a little Easter egg and a tease for our next video, focused on the Freestar Collective. This sign in Aquila City says established in 2167 by Solomon Co. There are a few things in real life Solomon Co. could be referencing, but I wonder, what would the implications be if this man, honored in the central painting in the Constellation headquarters, was in fact Solomon Co.? What if Solomon was a leader in the United Colonies who was tasked with spreading human colonies all the way out to Aquila City, then eventually became disillusioned with the UC and gave up his leadership mantle to become an explorer instead? I find this very interesting, but more on that in the next video. Next, the United Colonies imperialistic tendencies. Now, fans of Bethesda know they like to build their worlds with a realistic historical backdrop for the game to take place in. Many times this is done through the lens of politics and tension between those major factions. As an example, in Skyrim, the major political tension is between the Imperials and the Stormcloaks. Here in Starfield, we know that tension exists between the UC and the Freestar Collective. There are two pieces of evidence so far that point towards the United Colonies holding imperialism as a leading ideology. The first and maybe strongest piece of evidence is our knowledge of the other settled systems. As we already observed, Aquila City was established quickly after New Atlantis in an entirely new system. We also know that Neon is located in the Vol 2 system, made evident by these signs we see in Neon's gameplay section. Using the Starfield Navigator application, we can see that the Vol 2 system is 25 light years from Alpha Centauri. And a quick parenthetical note here, if you don't know about the Starfield Navigator app, I was able to interview the creator a few weeks ago if you like to nerd out with numbers and play around with potential trade routes, I highly recommend you check it out. The link to that video and the program are in the description. Now, we don't know when Neon was established or even which planet it's on, but we do know it is part of the United Colonies made evident by this UC security guard here. More on that later. And that Neon started as a fishing outpost for the Xenofresh Corporation. Two things to note here. First, I would speculate most corporations don't have the funds or means to set up an entire outpost all the way across the galaxy unless they are either contracted, heavily subsidized, or even outright owned by the United Colonies. Why would the UC need to set up a fishing outpost 25 light years away from their capital city where most of the imports will be received? Looking at the planet Jemison, there seems to be plenty of water. The star map section tells us there are abundant levels of flora and fauna, and even that we have a biological water source. Now, this could mean that our water supply is filled with biological contaminants like bacteria, but I don't think the original settlers would have chosen Jemison if they didn't already have a way of filtering and cleaning the water for consumption and use. So the fact that the UC would set up the Xenofresh Corp 25 light years away makes me suspicious. And I can't help but wonder if they are just scouring the galaxy for any and all resources and plundering them to their heart's content with no consideration for the long-term repercussions of their actions. The second piece of evidence that points towards imperialism is the pervasive amounts of security there seems to be throughout the settled systems. As we noted earlier, we see this guard patrolling Neon's back alleys. We also see several other armed guards in New Atlantis. 
I count five guards here in this scene, and then four more right here. Now keep in mind this is speculation, but this just gives off a kind of military state vibe, like the UC is ready to squash any and all kinds of dissent with an iron fist. I mean, let's go back to this scene and look over here on the left part of the frame. The UC security officer has this child cornered along with some other disapproving authority figure. This definitely seems heavy-handed here. With these things in mind, I want to know what you think. Is the United Colonies a dangerous force in the galaxy that have served their purpose and need to finally fade off into the proverbial sunset? Or do you feel like they really are trying to stabilize and secure humanity's future in the galaxy using the necessary means to get the job done at all costs? Let me know in the comments and be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. For now, may you find wonder as you journey through the stars.